Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shadow Wraith, and today I'm going to be going over the golden rule of how to become a better player with your army. Now, as you know, if you watch my channel, uh, I do focus on competitive play for the uh, Middle Earth Strategy Battle game. But, there is one golden rule that I do tend to follow, and that does help me get better at playing the game, it really does. And it might sound mediocre to some people, but like, trust me. Give it a try, and you will enjoy your games tenfold. Yeah, it, it it really does add another element to the game. Okay, so when playing competitive play, it's quite easy to get caught up in like statistics. You know, um, what the percentages of like wounds and stuff like that. Uh, what's the most optimum uh, optimal list, mid maxing, whatever you want to call it, meta chasing, all that stuff. But not actually care about the faction. The best way I find to play. Is to run a story in your head. I know it sounds silly, right? Okay, but if you watch my battle reports I did on Tabletop Simulator, I ran Arnold for one of the first times, and I knew everything I was gonna like do. Uh, my captain, I give him a name. He's Captain K, hero of Arnold. Okay, and the story, I didn't even care about the name characters. It was all about Captain K, and he did fantastic. And I do believe that's because I gave him, you know, I believed in the spleen of the dice. You know, Captain K would prevail. But when I'm playing my Far Harad, obviously I've got no named heroes really in that. But it's all about my, my like the narrative I run in my head of this tribe coming in to fight whoever I'm fighting. If I'm fighting elves, I love the fact that these tribal men have come in to beat up some elves. What are they going to do against them? I can imagine the terror the elves might feel when they see the camels charging in all these horrific abominations that are half trolls. Yeah, things like that. Because we are, after all, playing a game based in Middle-earth. One of the best fantasy worlds ever created, in my opinion, of course. Um, and don't lose that fantasy when you're playing the game. Okay? If you are playing Rivendell and you're using Elrond, you know you, you can imagine Elrond's reactions when he's seeing the opponent's force. What's going on through your elves' head as they see these horrific orcs. Um, things like that. That's what I love about the game. I love writing my own narrative in my head. Even if you've got an opponent, that's quite good. You can always start, why are you fighting? Why have your two, two factions come across each other? Even if you're fighting like Rivendell versus Gondor, there could be something that you're fighting over. Even if it's just war games where you decided to practice your swords against each other because um, Bo uh, Boromir like, mouthed off at Elrond saying how his forces were better and they decided to settle it on the battlefield with rubber swords. Not only does this, I think, improve your gameplay because you love your army a little bit more and you care a little bit more, you also... Th there's less salt when you start <laughs> getting really bad rolls because you can always put something to it. Like he's fumbled with his sword because he's rolled triple ones. What is Strider doing? Things like that. Of course, at a tournament, it's hard to play like that. But I always try. It's always good to have a laugh. And I think this is the best community to have a laugh like that with. Um... Talking to my opponent before a game uh, at an event is probably one of my favourite parts, um, kind of tied with after the game. But if you've got good banter going between you and your opponent, you're both going to enjoy the game more and you're both going to play better and neither of you should come out feeling absolutely salty. There are some lists out there that are just absolute power gaming. So if you're playing under 500 points, I'd say, and you've got ranges of a thillion, you're not really caring that much about narrative, unless you just love rangers, I guess. But then you'd probably bring them to 800 point games and yeah. So try and find the narrative behind why you're fighting. Try and give your characters a narrative, especially unnamed captains. They're the unsung heroes of Middle Earth. I know everyone loves these big like Elendils and Gilgalads and stuff like that, but what about your elf captain who managed to hold off a troll for a turn? Things like that. That's what I absolutely love about this game. It's There's so many opportunities to have a narrative. I like playing the weirder factions, so I do love my Far Harad. I absolutely adore dark denizens of Mirkwood as they're trying to expand or they just kind of get lost and leave the <laughs> leave Mirkwood um, and fast, like stumble across Rohan or something like that. So they're the two more narrative sides. Um, there's one more narrative side that will aid your gameplay as well which is what I do. So if I've got Captain K, for example, and we're playing an objective game, and I've sent him off to get the uh, right flank objective, that's his objective, and that's all he's going to do. I know, and that can be its own little narrative. 
as he will fight to the bitter end to hold that single objective. And if you're facing an overwhelming force on that flank, you might think, ah, this is hopeless. But it's not for your captain. It's not for Captain K. He knows what he signed up for. He's got his Arnold Warriors. He's going to hold his ground. He's going to hold that objective for the rest of the game. And you'll be surprised how many times he will. Even if it's not Captain K, if it's your dwarf captain or something like that. Um, yeah, so setting tasks for your warband is really key. I like going in with a plan, a battle plan. Not everyone plays like that. Some people go with the flow. But if they've got a job, they tend to do it a bit better because you know what you expect them to do. Anyway, this is just a short video. Just to remind all you lovely gamers out there that play this fantastic game, not to lose the narrative behind your battles. Okay, don't lose it. It's one of the best aspects of this game. You can play competitively, but keep the narrative going in your head. Why are your Corsairs of Umber there? Who who's that bosun? Things like that. I I tend to give warriors names if they perform overly well in battle. So in my Far Harad list, I have got a troll who is named Trevor Trollbane because every time I fight a troll. He's in there and he fights that troll, he passes his courage test and he'll hold that troll and he has killed two trolls in those games, but he hasn't fallen to any of them. And these are fully grown like Mordor Isengard trolls. So yeah, it's just all part of the fun. I have one archer in my Serpent Horde list who's coloured and he's painted in a different colour because he's so terrible at shooting, he almost always misses. But that one game where he does get a kill, it becomes ten times more important because he finally got a kill. Top lad, he's getting better. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. It was just a quick reminder video. Don't lose the narrative. Don't lose the world that we're playing in. It is a fantasy game after all, and it is a game. Have fun with your opponent. Anyway, if you like this video, do consider liking. And if you are feeling especially generous today, do consider subscribing. But even if you don't do either of those things, I still hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.